Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you. So the video that we're going to be covering today, or rather the topic that we're going to be covering today in this video, uh, is one that's been requested quite a few times. It's one I've alluded to quite a few times, and it's one I've been pretty eager to get to, and that is our Dragon Link Combo Guide. So ever since I started playing this deck, I've often referenced how uh, this deck is very uh, free form in the way that it plays and the way that it likes to uh, execute its combos and um, basically what I mean when I say that it's free form is that unlike other combo guides that I've put out in the past right where um, we have these like specific lines that we follow where it's like you open this you do these steps and then you get this and you can do that pattern very repeatably. Uh, Dragon Link has a lot of opening hands where what you can end on is very dependent on what you open with and there are many ways to achieve various different boards uh, even with the same combination of cards and it often comes down to having like you know specific cards to end on specific boards or um Sometimes it's just like, I don't know, it's it's a huge like web. It's a, it's a mess is what it is. Um, but we're going to try to put a little bit of order to that mess uh, in today's video. I'm going to talk about some basic things that you should know about comboing with Dragon Links. We'll go over some like very, very bare bones plays like, you know, one card, you can end with this. And then after we establish that core line, we're going to take a look at some hands, uh, not only with just this 40 card variant that um, you know, I'm showing here, but also our 60 card grass variant. I'm going to start with the 40 card variant because I don't want to start with any combos assuming that we are one, playing a grass variant, or two, that we're going to, you know, need the grass in order to make our plays. Because grass is one of those things, that grass looks greener is what I mean. Uh, by the way, that would be, um, you know what, <laughs> I should have known that searching for just that would, uh, not do it. This card right here, for those who are not familiar. Uh, the 60 card variant runs three of these in order to mill about 20 cards, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, uh, in order to set up a bunch of stuff in the graveyard to make your plays live. Um, while I do think this, this is the more, um, that this does offer a lot of extension and this is the more like combo-y variant, um, it's not by any means necessary required, or necessary or required to make plays. So. Yeah, like I mentioned, I'm going to start with the 40 card variant, we'll go over some basic lines, and then after we cover that, then we'll maybe do a couple of hands with the grass variant and show um, what that can enable, potentially. So, um, this is going to be structured differently, like I said. Um, we're going to show uh, some hands more than anything else, like, okay, here with this hand, uh, here's what I'm looking for, here's what we're going to go into. But like I said, we will start with a core combo line of, like, very, very basic stuff. So. Um, yeah, I'm not going to necessarily bother reading off the card list here. Um, I usually do that for combo guides like I do for deck profiles and gameplay, but I think for the combo guides, it's a little bit less important what's in the deck, especially this one we're going to be covering two different decks, like I said. So um, I'm just going to say, let's just go straight into the comboing. All right, so this is actually a really good example hand to start off with. Let's say you open a hand that looks exactly like this, and you're going first, and the only real, like, live quote-unquote card we have here is the Star Leash Safer. Everything else is a, uh, you know, disruption or some kind of uh, just responsive card. Um, but with the Star Leash Safer alone, we do actually have plays. They're going to be very bare-bone plays, and um, it's not an ideal line by any means, but it is still plays, you know, so... Um, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how we're going to get started here. Uh, this line should also be achievable with... A chaos space if you have chaos space discarding either light or dark monster doesn't matter which uh, you should be able to achieve this as well so we're gonna start by normal summoning our safer here and I will activate the safer its effect uh, sacrificing it in order to search out a collapser but I want to get collapser because obviously I've only got a light monster to banish so if you had chaos space you know you would discard your light or dark monster, search either Collapse Serpent or Wyver Burster. If you have the option, uh, try to search the Wyver Burster. It does net you an extra card in hand. Uh, that extra card is another Wyver Burster that you can't summon, but it's better to have the advantage because uh, you can discard that later and save some of your more life stuff. But uh, Now we're going to go ahead and special summon this Collapse Serpent by banishing the Safer from the graveyard. And then we're going to link the Collapse Serpent here into our Striker Dragon. Uh, now, this is the first of the many Link summons we're going to be doing, of course, Dragon Link um, being the name of the deck. Now, as far as how you want to chain block here, 
it's really dependent on your hand, honestly, um, whether you want the Striker Surge to be chain blocked or the Collapse Serpent Surge to be chain blocked. In a situation like this, I think I want the Collapse Serpent Surge to be chain blocked. I'd rather have the Light, the, um, the Wyvern Burster. I always want to call that monster Light Pulsar. That's the big one. Uh, Wyvern Burster is what I'd rather have here to extend my plays because Boot Sector Launch doesn't do anything by itself. If I had one, if I had like a Rocket Tracer in hand or multiple Rocket Monsters in my hand, then I would prioritize the Boot Sector Launch Search. But uh, with this hand, I'm going to prioritize the Collapse Serpent Launch, or the Collapse Serpent Search, not Launch. So, um,. Yeah, chain blocking in this deck, even that is kind of more free form. Uh, you know, again, other combo decks, uh, there's almost always like a right and you know a right way to chain block. But uh, this one again, it just really depends on what you're trying to search. So, I'm gonna special the Wyvern Burster here by banishing the Collapse Serpent. Uh, now that I have two dragons in play, I can special summon Dragoonity Knight Romulus to get that dragon uh, ravine search. Now, if I played a second Collapse Serpent, I could search it with the Wyvern Burster here. Alternatively, if I started with Wyvern Burster and then did Collapse Serpent second, I could search another Wyvern Burster here. Um, that would, again, net me an extra card. Not that I could use it, but it would be an extra card to discard with the Dragon Ravine. Um, I'm going to activate Dragon Ravine next. Not the Boot Sector launch, obviously, because I don't have any Rocket cards in hand. So, uh, Dragon Ravine, I'm going to discard one of my cards. I'll do this extra Gamma to send a Dragon Monster from my deck to the Graveyard. Uh, for that Dragon Monster, I want that to be Absorado Dragon. Now, with Absorado Dragon's effect, I get to add any Rocket Monster from my deck to my hand. I'll add a Tracer. So, in a lot of combos, and not just Dragon Link, but combo decks in general, even ones with structured lines, what helps me personally combo with them is I like to look for what I like to refer to as checkpoints. So I'm like, okay, at certain stages of the combo, you should have accomplished certain things, right? Um, the quote unquote first stage or the first checkpoint, as I like to refer to it with the uh, Dragon Link combos is uh, the you know, Romulus for the ravine and the ravine pitching the uh, Absorator to search the tracer with the boot sector launch in hand. Um, so there are multiple ways to get to this point. Uh, you can get to this point, like I said, with Safer by itself, with Chaos Space, with a Light or drag, uh, Dark card to discard. Also, really, any two level 4 lower dragon monsters will get you to this point. Or not even necessarily two level 4 lower dragon monsters. Two dragons, one of which is level 4 lower, will also get you to this point. So... In a, especially with a combo deck like a, you know this one again that is more freeform, I think the checkpoint method is the way to go when you don't always have like a structured line to follow. Uh, with this hand, there is actually you know you can actually follow like a line, a pattern with this. This is a quote unquote one card combo with the safer, but um, regardless, for future plays, it's going to help us out. So we've reached what I like to refer to as the first checkpoint. So now we're moving to like the second kind of phase of the combo here. I'm going to activate the Boot Sector launch over the Dragon Ravine. I'll then use its effect to special summon this Rocket Tracer that's in my hand. I'll just throw that right over here. Uh, zone placement can matter for this part of the combo. Again, as with many, this is going to be a recurring theme with Dragon Links. Like, sometimes this matters, sometimes it doesn't. When the board is relatively empty, the zone placement doesn't typically matter, but um, as much as possible, try to keep these three zones under Romulus open uh, for this stage of the combo. Uh, anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and activate the Rocket Tracer effect. I'll pop the Boot Sector launch because I don't need that anymore. And I'll special summon a Rocket Recharger for my deck, and I'll throw it right over here. Uh, now I'm going to go into Pisty, the Guard Dragon Pisty, that is. I specifically want to throw it in this column over here, or in this zone over here, rather. And then I will use the Rocket Tracer to go into... Uh, right, right here in the Striker Dragon in the middle column. Uh, this is, of course, for the Guard Dragon Pisty effect. Uh, you have to have two monsters pointing to the same zone in order to bring something back. Let's go ahead and activate that and bring back the Rocket Tracer. And we'll throw that right over here. So this is the next checkpoint, as I like to refer to it. Now we have our Pisty and our Strike Dragon in place, and they were able to bring back the Rocket Tracer. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a Quad Boral Dragon using the Rocket Tracer and the Guard Dragon Pisty. And I'll throw it right here. Now, with Quad Boral's effect, basically what I'm doing with Quad Boral is it's going to cost me another discard here, but I'm going to more or less kind of convert my Pisty and Tracer into uh, Tracer and Recharger. I guess in that regard, I'm just converting the Guard Dragon Pisty into a uh, Rocket Recharger. And I'm doing this so that I can Synchro Summon 
a Chaos Magical. We'll, we'll do that here in a second, yeah. Uh, getting these monsters back on the board. That might have seemed like a little pointless, right? Like, well, what was the point of doing that if you're just getting these back on the board? But you'll notice we're actually up the Striker Dragon, and we do have one additional monster on the board as a result of having done that. So now, as I was saying, uh, we're going to go into the Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic Magical Dragon using the Tracer and the Recharger we brought back. Do note that when you use Quad Boral, you cannot make Link 2 or lower monsters for the rest of the turn. All right, now the Chaos Ruler's effect is gonna activate. We'll get our Excavate. We don't need to hit anything here, but it's always nice when you do. Again, not necessary, but nice. So here I can add the Rocket Synchron to my hand. And now, funnily enough, um, because I started with Seyfert, I did use my normal summon, but if I had started with uh, the Chaos Space, I would have actually gone up to this point without having used my normal summon yet. So, you know, I searched a Rocket Synchron here. I could make a, again, had I used Chaos Space, I could have even made an additional level 8 Synchro, a Borlode Savage Dragon, in addition to what I'm going to get at the end of this combo here. Just another fun thing I thought I'd, you know, mention there. Uh, oh, we can use the Chaos Space effect as well for an extra draw. Um, in order to put back the uh, either the Collapse Serpent or the Wyver Burster, whichever was like the first one, the one you ended up banishing for the other um, Chaos Dragon, you get an extra draw there. But that's that's mostly. I mean, it's not irrelevant. Draws are good, but uh, it's not relevant to comboing, should I say? So anyway, let's get back to the combo. We're at this phase here. Um, I'm actually gonna summon Nightmare Unicorn, which looks a little bit weird, um, but I'm gonna do this in order to get again an additional monster on the board. Um, I'm going to make the Link 3. I obviously don't want to activate the effect because I want both these cards on board. And then now I can get back the Chaos Ruler. can banish one of the Gammas and... doesn't super duper matter. Well, okay, you don't want to banish the Recharger or Tracer. I want to keep those engraved. Um, I can just banish the Quad Whirl. That's fine. And then I'll throw the Chaos Ruler right here. It doesn't really matter because I'm just going to go into our ending boss monster, which is Boral and a Dragon, using all three of the monsters on board here. Okay, so there it is. So I wanted to again start off by showing what I think of as like the core combo, which again, you can start with a Starleash Safer, or you can start with a Chaos Space. Either will land you uh, the Boral and a Dragon here, uh, with the, you know, a few cards in hand as well. Uh, two of the cards you opened it with, one of the cards you got off of the Chaos uh, Ruler, Excavate, and then an extra draw from Chaos Space. Now, it's not, like, the greatest end board in the world. Boral and Dragon is quite a fierce monster. Uh, can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, can't be targeted... Or, no, sorry, it can't be... No, 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 sorry, it cannot be targeted by card effects. Um, and then also you get to negate and then bring back a rocket monster, usually your rocket tracer. Um, it is just one monster negate, though, so you do have to be mindful of that. But again, this is all just assuming you only have, like, the one card, which very often in this deck is not going to be the case. So, now that we've established what I like to, again, refer to as a core combo, uh, let's see what else this deck is capable of with a uh, different hand here. Okay, so now, alternatively, we open a hand like this with the Starleash Safer, just like last time. But this time, as you can see, we've got more options here. Namely, we've got a Rocket Tracer and an Absorider Dragon in our opening hand as well. And these are both going to act as extenders that will allow us to combo. Um, again, we're going to kind of start with the same kind of baseline combo, but we're going to see where we can add on to it and how we can improve upon it to make an even stronger and more efficient inboard. So uh, just like last time, we're going to go ahead and start by normal summoning the Safer and activating the effect here. Now, here I'm still going to send the Safer. I don't want to send... I could, like, in theory, send the Abs Router to add an Abs Router and then search a, um, another Rocket Monster, but I don't want to do that here. I'm just going to go ahead and use the Safer its effect. Um, or rather, I'm only going to use it on itself. Don't want to send the Tracer. Definitely want to keep that in hand. And once again, we're going to add the Collapse Serpent, because obviously we've only got the uh, Light Monster to banish in the graveyard there. Alright, from there we can special summon our first Striker Dragon to get our Boot Sector launch. Uh, here I think this is definitely a hand where I would prioritize getting the Boot Sector launch search over the Wyver Burster search. Like if I missed out on the Boot Sector launch I'd be really really sad, but missing out on Wyver Burster is kind of like, it, it doesn't matter as much here. So um, I'm going to do the Striker Dragon as Chain Link 1 in this instance, and then the Collapse Serpent as Chain Link 2 in this, inst in this instance. Um, as opposed to last time where, again, we did it the other way around. Let's see if I'll add the Wyver Burster and then the Boot Sector Launch. Alright, 
Wyvern Burster effect. Let's go here. Vanishing Collapse Serpent. And then just like last time, we're getting the Romulus. Alright, so we're nearing the first checkpoint. We're pretty much at the first checkpoint, adding the Dragon Ravine now. Um, but we're going to be doing things a little bit differently here. Um, because last time we discarded the like a random card in hand to send the Absa Router in order to add a card. Um, we already have the Absa Router in our hand this time, so uh, this time we can actually get away with sending uh, potentially a different card here. Um, if we're playing the 60 card variant, we would have a lot of options of stuff to send here, like Destrudo, um, potentially, um, well, mainly Destrudo is like the main other thing you would send. Um, in this case here, Hmm, let's just go ahead and activate. I'm actually trying to fake. See, this is funny. This is the thing about Dragon Link. Like, you know, I, in this specific hand, I don't, you know, know off top of my hand what the, like, optimal line is. And that is the thing that can be intimidating about playing this deck is it's not always readily apparent what the optimal line is. But again, if we remember our core combo line, just think about how we can branch out from there. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out, right? So normally, again, we'd use the Ravine to set up the Absa Router and then get the Rocket Tracer in hand. But we've already got both these things. So we don't really need to do that. We could still use Ravine as a way to discard Absa Router and add a Rocket Synchron and special that with the Boot Sector launch. That would open us up to the possibility of summoning uh, from the extra deck here the where is it the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Another line we could potentially think about is using the Boot Sector launch. Um, to special the Rocket Tracer and then special the Absa Router and not use the Ravine, but. That those both get us two monsters on the board, so they're more or less the same thing. The main difference being that we're going to get the Ravine Send as well, which might not seem like, you know... It might seem kind of like what's uh, you know, what we're going to accomplish, but let's actually see what we can accomplish. I mean, it's better to send something than not, I think, so... I'll send a Dragon Monster, we'll discard the Absa Router. Then let's see here... Now, if I had the Safer still in the graveyard, I could actually send the Levianir and then banish the Safer to wheel the Levianir back to my hand, potentially. Um, I could send a Safer anyway, just in case off the Chaos Reel I end up excavating. Well, if I excavate the Levianir, I could just add it. Or I could add something else and send the Levianir and then banish the Safer and then add it. I think that makes Safer the best thing to send here. Like, alternatively, you could make an argument of sending Levianir anyway, and then the Chaos Ruler hitting one of the saferts, but I think it's, I mean, it's gonna be the same odds either way. We're gonna add the Rocket Synchron, so we don't need that. We've already got Tracer. Tracer's gonna summon a Recharger. So, hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll just send a safert here, that's fine. And then Absorator. Absorator doesn't care how it's sent to the graveyard, so it will get its effect by just discarding it for the Ravine as well. Um, and then I said we're gonna add Rocket Synchron here. All right, now let's play the Boot Sector Launch and activate that. So you can see we're, again, more or less at the same point in the combo, but we do have an extra monster on board. Now we have this extra uh, Rocket Synchron. So I'll use the Rocket Tracer effect, pop this Boot Sector Launch, summon the Recharger. I'll go ahead and throw that here. Now, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'll still just do the Pisty and Striker Dragon setup. It should still be... I mean, it'll still net us an extra material on board, the extra Striker Dragon, so... I think it should be fine here. Yeah, I don't want to use the Rocket Synchron. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Alright, and then we'll do Pisty's effect... Um, bring back the Tracer. I wonder if there's anything better to bring back. No, there's not. Okay, so now I'm thinking, are we going to go into Quad Boral again? Yeah, I think that should be fine here. We'll use the Pisty and the Tracer. Put it there. Oh, we're going to have a monster negate, so I'll just go ahead and discard the Imperm here. Pop the quad boral. That allows the special summon the recharger and the tracer. We'll throw them here and here. And then now we can sink into the chaos ruler. So here's the interesting thing. Now we do have an option of do we want to go for the abyss or um, 
kind of or the Borland. It'll really depend on this Excavate, honestly. That's yet another wild card factor that tends to come up quite a bit with Dragon Link, is that uh, this Excavate with Chaos Ruler, it sometimes really depends on what you Excavate as far as, like, what all you can make here. Now, I am wondering... Let me see something. This is once per turn, right? Yeah, okay, I, I figured that was the case. Because um, I could destroy this Striker Dragon. Basically, I'm thinking, like, okay, if I add this Rocket Recharger, I can use Striker Dragon's effect on itself to bring back the Tracer uh, to my hand. And then I can use Recharger's effect and special summon a Dark Monster from my graveyard. Is there a really good Dark Monster to summon? Like, is there an exceptionally good one here? I don't think there is... Although, no, I could get back a Tracer, although I don't know that, that that really does anything. It's the same number of materials on board, right? No, it's not. It's plus one. Oh, no, wait, it is the same amount of materials, because this doesn't summon itself. It sends it from the hand to the graveyard. And then I can't summon... Oh, no, I just can't special them from the extra deck, so I can actually get another material by bringing this quad world back. Okay. I thought that was the case. I think I almost talked myself out of that, but okay, I think this should work. Let's go ahead and use Striker Dragon's effect on itself. Um, I will return the Tracer to my hand. That's fine. Okay, now I get the Recharger effect, right? And then I can special the Quad Boral. I'll put it right here. That's fine. Okay, cool. So now I should be able to... Let's see... Um, one, two, three, and then, yeah, all right, let's go for the Borland using this. That is two materials, this is two materials. All right, and then now we still actually have the Chaos Ruler effect. Don't use Safer its effect there, that's to put Chaos Ruler back, and we definitely don't want to be doing that. We can banish the Gamma, and let's banish one of the Striker Dragons, that's fine. Bring back the Chaos Ruler, and then now we can actually sink those into the red, um, you know, the red dragon abyss there. So, yeah, as you can see, we did a slightly different combo line there. Um, again, it really does just depend on not only what you open with, but what you excavate as well. And I think that was the best I could have done. Even now, I'm, like, a little hesitant. Like, was that the actual, like, optimal combo line there? Um, it did net us with uh, a few less cards in hand, but again, this extra... Uh, Omni Negate on the board, which is obviously very fairly powerful. Um, that's also not to understate our monster's attack points. Like, having above 3,000 attack points is really, really good in general because it means that you're often above most other deck's boss monsters. I uh, tend to be around like 2,800 to 3,000. Um, now, granted, some of those boss monsters, like I'm thinking of like uh, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer and uh, Cheng Ying, have effects that affect their attack points or drop your monster's attack points, but even then, the Borland can't be destroyed by battle, so <laughs> even if your opponent's got that workaround, um, it really does take, like, uh, non-targeted, non-destruction removal to get rid of the Borland, so yeah, there's just an alternative line where we can, like, deviate slightly from, but still reference the core line in order to make, um, you know, a different play there, so I'm gonna try one more hand with this one, and then after that, we'll maybe look into some hands with the Grass variant. Okay, so here we've got a very solid opening hand. This is the kind of hand I was kind of looking for to really demonstrate uh, what this deck can do um, with some alternative openings. Uh, Chaos Space plus an extra extender in the form of Quick Launch that doesn't use your normal summon. Uh, if you can save your normal summon at all with this deck, the longer you can save it, generally speaking, the better. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the ways in which that's the case. So. Uh, let's start with the Chaos Space here. I'll just go ahead and throw out my uh, Driver, it doesn't really matter. And I will use that to add Collapse Serpent. I'm uh, going to start off mostly the same here. going to special the Collapse Serpent, banishing the Driver. Alright, throw that there, use that to make a Striker. I want to do this so that way I can get my Wyver Burster and more Extenders that way. Uh, now here, let's see, this is definitely a hand where I want to prioritize the Wyvern Burster, because I don't have any Rocket Monsters in hand. I, I, I have the Quick Launch, but that just summons one from the deck, so... Uh, here I'm going to make Collapse Serpent Chain Link 1, and the Striker Dragon Chain Link 2. Don't want to use the Quick Launch just yet. It doesn't super duper matter, I guess, when to use it, but... Um, I'd rather just save it for when I know I'm actually going to need whatever I summon off of the Quick Launch here, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and activate the Wyvern Burster, banishing that Collapse Serpent. 
Then I'll send those for the Romulus. Here we have arrived at the first checkpoint, as I like to refer to it. The Romulus getting the Dragon Ravine. Alright, so here I'm going to activate Dragon Ravine. And I'm going to discard in order to... Um, I'll discard the Gamma here. I'll discard in order to send the Absaratter to add a Rocket Monster, but I'm not going to add a Tracer this time. Um, and actually, I think I would do this even if I didn't... Well, hmm. No, that's not true. <laughs> I was going to say I would do this even if I didn't have the uh, Quick Launch in hand, but I don't necessarily think that's true. But um, with this particular hand, I'm going to use the Absaratter to actually add the Rocket Synchron, because I still have my normal summon. I can use the Rocket Synchron to bring back Absaratter and then go for an easy level 8 that way, or rather an additional level 8 in this particular hand, because we still have the Quick Launch as well. I actually don't even need the Boot Sector Launch here, because I want to normal summon this rocket monster, and this is a rocket monster summoned from the deck. So we can use this to extend potentially later in the turn, or we might not even need it at all. There are some times where you actually just don't even need some of your combo pieces, and this game might end up being one of those. So let's see here. I'm trying to think how exactly I would like to do this. There are multiple ways. I'm basically trying to figure out when I want to use my Chaos Ruler Excavate here. Um, I could do it now by using the Rocket Synchron to bring back the Absarado, or I could wait until after I Quick Launch. I think I might wait until after. I think I might Quick Launch first. Like, let's let's do the quote-unquote regular part of the combo now, right? Where we Special the Tracer. Uh, I'll activate Tracer's effect to pop the Dragon Ravine. Don't need that anymore. Uh, Tracer's effect will summon the Recharger from our deck. Now we can get the Pisty. We could even just do the regular combo and then just throw this on to make like a boar load savage dragon at the end. We might actually just do that. Uh, no, I don't want to activate the Romulus effect here. That's definitely for sure. Yeah, we'll use the recharger and make. Uh, I don't want to use that. Now let's use Pisty's effect. I'll bring back the tracer here. Actually, what I could even do is use Striker's Effect, destroy Pissy, bring the Recharger back to my hand, activate Boot Sector Launch, Boot Sector Launch Effect to special the Recharger. That way I don't have to use the Quad Boral and I can still summon Link to or lower monsters this turn. Is that going to matter, though? If I don't do it that way, then if I do it just like the regular way, well, I'd still have to discard a card anyway. So both avenues use a card from my hand, either a card to discard or the boot sector launch. But one keeps the boot sector launch on the board and doesn't use the quad boro. So let's let's do it that way, uh, which is again we'll use Striker Dragon's effect. Let's pull up this pissy. Target the recharge. Oh, I could even use Rocket Recharger's effect, couldn't I? Um, do I want to do that? Would I rather special the Pisty or the Absarouter? No, because I want to summon the Chaos Ruler here, right? Yes, so I don't want to do that. Um, so cancel. I'm not going to activate that effect. What is this effect here? Chaos Space? Um, yeah, there's no reason not to Chaos Space here, so let's go ahead and do that. I, I guess there is a reason, like, maybe you want to do it after you excavate. You could make an argument for or against that either way, I think, but... That's nah, safer, whatever, it's fine. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I said, we're going to activate the Boot Sector Launch now. Use its effect. Um, special Summon up to two. Now, I do still have my Normal Summon, so I'm only going to Summon the Rocket Recharger. I want to Normal Summon this Rocket Synchron, so I'm not going to Special Summon another monster. Actually, hang on a second. It's the Lindrous Dragon. If Rocket Monster is Special Summon to the field, while this card is in your graveyard, you can Special... Would give me an extra link too. Is there anything I can really do with that? Uh, not really. I'm just gonna go for the Chaos Ruler. I don't usually play Delindrous Dragon anyway in most of my variants, so I'm not gonna pay it too much creed there. Although <laughs> knowing my luck, there's probably like a much better line I missed out on by ignoring the Delindrous Dragon, but eh, whatever. It's usually relatively niche that it comes up either way. So, ooh, we actually got. We got a potential extender here in the form of Absarator. Not even potential, this is just an extender in the form of Absarator Dragon. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Because I believe it's each effect. Yeah, each effect you can use once per turn. So 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and normal summon my Rocket Synchron here. I don't think zone placement matters as much right now. Target the Absorator. Special that here. Now I could special this Absorator if I wanted to. What would that actually let me do here? I could special this Absorator, and then I could go like boom 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 into Boroland, and then boom boom into Hot Red Dragon. Is there any way for me to bring back the Rocket Synchron? Oh, I guess if I use Quad Boral, I could. Oh wait, hang on, let me actually think about this for a second. Well, I'd have to use Rocket Synchron to make Quad Boral as a thing. I want to use Rocket Synchron to make both Hot Red Dragon and Boral and Savage Dragon. I'm trying to figure out if I can do that here. Um, no, I don't think I can. I'm pretty sure I can't, as a matter of fact. Well, actually, hang on, if I used Boraland to negate one of my monsters... Oh, wait, this, this will work, won't it? Hang on, let me... Okay, let me special this. I don't think this is a mistake. <laughs> great, great vote of confidence there. No, yeah, okay, so... If I make Boraland... Using these... No, using these. Oh, that doesn't work. Hang on. I'd have to make the hot red dragon first. How long does this how long does Borla negate for? Uh it just negates it, so it's not till end of turn. That's actually really powerful, but doesn't really help me here. If it negated till end of turn, I could use these to make hot red dragon, use these No, or then brought back the Chaos Ruler, right, and then use those to make the Boraland, keeping an Absorator on board. Use Boraland. Oh, I can just negate this Absorator. So that does actually work. Yes. Okay, I think what I said actually does work. Let me try this. Hopefully I didn't screw up here, but I don't think I did. Okay, there's Hot Red Dragon, right? Now, let's activate the Chaos Ruler effect. Uh, I definitely don't want to banish my Rocket Synchron. Let's banish my Extra Striker Dragon, that's fine. Okay, bring this back, right? Ooh, I think this is gonna work. Alright, now make a Boraland. I want to use the Absorator that's negated. The Romulus has two materials, Striker Dragon and the Chaos Ruler we brought back. That'll bring back, or that'll bring out the Boraland. Now I can use Boraland's effect, negate my own Absorator, and bring back the Rocket Synchron. Hey, I knew I could figure it out. Now we can make a Boraland Savage Dragon as well. So this is pretty rad. Uh, this is what you get with a <laughs> a Chaos Space and a Quick Launch. Uh, you can actually end on a board with two Omni Negates as well as your Boraland Dragon here. Holy cow, that's actually stronger than what I thought we were going to even end on, to be totally honest. This, uh... <laughs> this deck does find ways to surprise you. So there's another example hand. Uh, just goes to show how powerful your board is if you can hold off on using your normal summon until you can normal summon a Rocket Synchron in particular. Uh, is a very powerful normal summon. But here, like I said, we've got our Boreland that we always like to end on as well as uh, the Omni Negate with the Hot Red Dragon and then another Omni Negate in the form of Boreload Savage Dragon. And then we even managed to save an Ash Blossom in our hand. So very, very strong. Now that we've seen what a base build can do as far as comboing goes, let's take a look at a more, um, at a grass build, at a 60 card build. Alright, so here we've got a pretty interesting opening hand, uh, and by interesting I mean not great. <laughs> Um, normally not great. If we weren't playing a grass variant, uh, we have switched over to the 60 card grass deck at this point. As you can see, obviously we're playing grass and we have 55 cards here. Uh, so normally, you know, a hand of a bunch of um, disruption plus just a rocket recharger is not that great. But grass has a pretty solid chance of fixing that. Um, even though this card doesn't guaranteed always like extend you, uh, I do consider this card an extender enough of the time that you can just you know, overall consider it a solid extender. So a normal summon dragon plus an extender should be enough to at the very least make a Boreland here. So let's see where we end up milling off grass and how we can follow up. Alright, so let's see if we get a search. We do off Absorider Dragon, that's nice. But before we take the search, I want to look at my graveyard and see what all we ended up milling here. Ooh, so we did end up milling the Boot Sector launch. That is important to note. Uh, we end up milling, ooh, we end up milling a Snow and a Thunder Dragon Dark and a Roar. That's actually really good. Uh, so even though we sent the Boot Sector launch and the Ravine, wow. Alright, so this will definitely be an interesting game. 
uh, to combo off with here. Uh, without Boot Sector Watch or Dragon Ravine, I suppose that is an inherent risk that you do take when you play Grass, but I think we should be fine here. Um, and I think we should mostly be fine because of the snow, um, among other things. So, all right, I'm going to add the Rocket Synchron, I think, because we haven't used, obviously we haven't used our normal summon. We've only played Grass so far. And I can use this to bring back Absorouter and go for a Chaos Ruler that way. So I think that's going to help. I think that's how I'm going to start here. I could also go for a Striker Dragon Special to Recharger, but uh, I don't think there's any need to do that just yet here. Uh, we do also, again, have the option of going into Colossus, plus an additional uh, monster here with the Thunder Dragon Roar. So that plus Snow will be two other materials on our board. So right now, let's see, if I normal summon Rocket Synchron, then, hmm. The thing is, especially into Striker Dragon, does it do anything because Boot Sector Watch is already in the graveyard. So yeah, I'm just going to start with this uh, Rocket Synchron here, I think. Bring back the Absa Router. Throw that here. Now, I know I did talk about going into the Chaos Ruler, but... Oh, no, we can only summon Dark Monsters now anyway. So, but, okay, we can still go into, like... I'm just thinking, what if I went into Striker Dragon anyway? I'm just really trying to really make sure that it actually doesn't do anything. I really don't think it does, though, is the thing. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, we'll just go into the, the Chaos Ruler here. I couldn't think about setting up a quad boral to bring back the rocket synchron. Do I have a did I mill a tracer? I don't think I did, actually. No, I did. Okay, good. So maybe we should make going into quad boral our next priority here. That's um, two dragon monsters, including a rocket. Okay, let's see if we can do that here. Let's see if we excavate. Hmm. Not the best excavate in the world. I'm actually just gonna take the Nibiru here. All right, let's use Fairy Tail Snow's effect. And let's see, I definitely want to banish Dark and Roar. Is there anything else I specifically want to banish? I think the answer is actually no. We'll get an extra draw off Chaos Space 2, which is nice. So uh, I'm just going to banish Spell and Trap cards here for the rest of my uh, other six, or other five, rather, because those don't matter. Don't want to use Snow's effect again. Although we could summon her again this turn, potentially. And now we get both of these effects. Doesn't really matter what order we activate these in. Um, but I'll chain block it. Actually, I should have chain blocked it the other way around. Uh, blocking the dark with the snow. So that way we can add the hawk for sure to summon the... Um, what do you call it? The... Colossus, that one. Okay, see so if I add the hawk. Special the last Thunder Dragon Dark from our deck. I'll just throw it right here. That's fine. Uh, I think we should just go into... Let's see. Oh, I have to activate the effect from my hand first, right? In order to summon Colossus, you do have to activate a Thunder um, Dragon's effect from your hand. So I'll just get a Roar. It doesn't really matter which one here. Go for my Colossus. So that way we have that established, at the very least. Alright, now how do I want to do this from here? What all can we summon? IP Mask Arena, Chaotic... Let me see something. Borland. It's just three plus effect monsters. So I'm thinking if I go for Snow plus Dark into, like, IP Mask right now, or Dark the Dark Gloomy Charmer, right? Or no, actually, Snow. Snow and Chaos Ruler into Dark. And then I can bring both back. Then I have a Link 2 and then three other Links. So yeah, I can make a Borland Dragon with this. Can I do anything better? I don't think I can, actually. I really wanted to be able to make a Boral, or a Quad Boral Dragon here, but I don't think that's actually going to be possible. So I guess we'll just go for the line I mentioned. Alright, now we have, like, again, some myriad of effects. Don't use Safer, though, because that'll put the Chaos Ruler back. Right, we'll do the Chaos Ruler. Uh, don't banish Fairy Tail Snow, obviously. Um... I could actually do the Thunder Dragon Hawk. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the desk. No, no, I can't because I use the in-hand effect. That's right. So I'll just banish Nibiru and one of the Roars. It's fine. Bring back the Chaos Ruler. Alright, and then now we'll activate Fairy Tail Snow's effect. 
Um, let's see. Again, I'll just banish. I should banish, yeah, let me banish something that I can actually put back with Chaos Space. Oops. Oh uh, yeah, you know what, we'll banish Maxi, that's fine. Could even banish Snow again, actually, if I, or I could even summon Snow again if I want to. This card not being once per turn is insane, by the way. Um, <laughs> I don't think you need me to tell you that, but it, it's actually just disgustingly good. Okay, let's activate Chaos Space and see what we draw here before we go into Borland. This could actually really matter. Uh, see for it. That actually doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I did say could. Now let's go into Borland now, using that as two materials. This, this, and this. Boom, and then, uh, again, there's snow if we wanted to. So, yeah, even though this might not look like the most impressive board in the world, right? It's only Borland plus, I say quote-unquote only Borland plus Colossus. That's still a negation, monsters that are mostly indestructible. The Borland in particular can't be targeted either. Um, and your opponent also can't add stuff. We also still have six cards in hand, including Valor, Ash, uh, and then if things go really bad, Nibiru and potentially Gamma as well. So, um, and then the Fairy Tail Snow is still live in the graveyard. So even when Grass sent both the Boot Sector launch and the Dragon Ravine from the deck to the graveyard, uh, you can see we're still able to make a solid amount of plays here. Uh, now that, we very much had to deviate very far from the core, but, like, the core line that I established first at the beginning of the video, but I still think that uh, those skills were essential to just kind of figure out how we could, you know, keep going from there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I liked to show this, uh, this grass game here as an example of what the deck can do um, when you're playing the 60-card grass fight, and this, <laughs> this one actually ended up being... A really nice one to show because then I also got to show off what you can do even if you mill both Boot Sector Launch and Dragon Ravine. So, yeah, alright. Okay, so I did want to show one more game here where we open with that Grass Looks Greeter, and this is actually a really solid, really, really solid hand here. Uh, not only in terms of disruption, but we've also got a Chaos Space in addition to that Grass Looks Greeter. So, uh, that's going to be really nice. Now, I think I do actually want to activate Chaos Space before Grass Looks Greener uh, for two main reasons. One, I do want to make sure that I have the Collapse Serpent to add, uh, and that I don't mill it off of Grass, and that I don't, you know, I don't have a use for this Chaos Space. Well, I could summon Levianir, but um, I want Collapse Serpent so I can search Wyvern Burst Herb, you know the drill. Um, I'll discard Gamma here. And the other reason to activate Chaos Space before Grass is to bait Ash Blossom. Now, if we activate Grass and it gets Ashed, we do have the Chaos Space, and we did demonstrate that the, that that will allow us to end on a Borland Dragon, but um, especially with the extra discard from Chaos Space, uh, in addition to the Grass getting negated, it's going to use up all of our extra resource in hand just to end on a Borland. Whereas if the Chaos Space gets negated, the Grass can set up a lot of stuff in Graveyard, which can potentially allow us to combo by itself without even the aid of the Chaos Space, but I still think it's better to have... Uh, the Maxi and Nibiru here, than to just throw them out to end on a Borland. I think this is more of a better response going into the opponent's turn than just a Borland by itself, so. It will add the Collapse Serpent, like I mentioned, because we discarded a Light Monster. That is going to be, like, a one fewer mill off Grass is greener, but that's totally fine. So, alright, let's fire off the Grass and see what we end up milling. Um, we do get the add off Absorider. That usually happens. Uh, that's definitely not uncommon at all. We milled a Destrudo. That's pretty good. We milled a Thunder Dragon Dark. That's pretty good. We milled both Absoriders. Oh, hang on a second. I see a Tracer. Okay, so two Tracers, one Recharger, one Synchron. So we still have one of each left in the deck. Okay, this is a fairly average mill. Um, it's a pretty decent one. You know, we did mill one piece of extension. Uh, two, actually. We can do the Colossus because we got the Thunder Dragon Dark here. So, um... Yeah, Grass ended up being a very, very nice extender for this board here. We actually still haven't used our normal summon yet either. Uh, always want to keep that in mind too. Um, so with Absa Router, um, keeping in mind that we haven't used our normal summon yet, I'm kind of inclined to add the Rocket Sinker on here. Um, I did that last time as well. Let me think. Okay, what am I doing? I'm especially in Collapser, but going for Synchron. Did I mill Boot Sector Launch or Ravine? Gotta watch out for those, too. Sometimes I have a bad habit of only looking at the monsters. Yes, I already milled Boot Sector Launch, so no launch. Although we will still get a Ravine. Or be able to get a Ravine. 
but I don't know that Ravine necessarily even does a whole lot here. Is this another game where we're not going to use either? This might end up being another game where we use neither of those cards. I think it will be, actually. Uh, I'm going to add the Rocket Sinker on, I think, because if I normal summon, if I add Tracer at all, I could pop Collapse Serpent, add Wire Reverse for Special Recharger, Special Collapse Serpent. Let's see, go into... Mm, eh, I don't know if I like that. Could make it Distrudo. Like I could, I could do the Romulus Piss C Striker Dragon Tracer setup, but I think we can do better than that, honestly, without even having to go into like the. Well, that does also add the Ravine, but again, does that do anything? We already have Distrudo, and we've already sent Distrudo and Absaratter, so I don't think that actually does anything. Do I have Levianir in here? I could send a safer to return a Levianir that's potentially in my graveyard, but I don't have Levianir, so. I'm just going to add the Rocket Synchron. Um, let's see. Okay, I am still going to do this, though. I'm going to Special the Collapse Serpent. Uh, let me make sure I have a Wyvern Burster still in my deck. See, this is the thing about grass. There's so many different things you need to check. Yeah, okay, we do still have a Wyvern Burster in deck, so that's good. Alright, I think I might just make a Striker Dragon anyway. Just to send the Collapse Serpent. Basically, I'll just get an extra material on board. The Striker Dragon is, like, purely an extra material. Uh, but not only that, I want to add the Wyver Burster. I make sure I banish the Thunder Dragon Dark, and that way I'm able to um, get my Colossus online as well. Okay, so banishing Thunder Dragon Dark. Special Wyver Burster. Activate Thunder Dragon Dark's effect. I definitely want to add Thunder Dragon Hawk. Because that will not only allow us to bring back our Thunder Dragon Dark, but that's also we need to um, we need to activate a Thunder Monster effect in hand in order to um, make sure that we have the requirements in order to summon Thunder Dragon Colossus. So you can see also from this game and the last one why I like having Thunder Dragon Colossus in the Grass variant or the Thunder Dragon package as a whole. Colossus is a really strong boss monster to end on, locks him out of searching, and is very very easy to make. Uh, just by doing like your regular plays so let's go into a chaos space next get our draw get more information before we commit to a normal summon with the rocket synchron here Ooh, we got a quick launch that's a really 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 good draw wow that might have been like the best possible draw honestly not even an exaggeration that might have actually just been the best possible draw um okay so we have a distrudo we can use we have a quick launch, we have a rocket synchro. Maybe we should do the rocket synchro first and get the excavate. And so we have like maximum information. Although, I think, let's see, one, two, and then I banish a tracer. No, let's do quick launch first, actually. Well, we still have a rocket tracer left in our deck. Should I do rocket tracer's effect now while I still have the recharger left in the deck? Hmm, that's a good question. Let's see, if I use Striker Dragon and Wyver Burster to go into Romulus, then I can search Ravine. And then I can pop Ravine with Tracer. That way I don't actually lose out on materials on board. I'm going to do it that way. Uh, counting the number of, like, Link materials is very important for this deck. So, um, yeah, because if I wanted to use Tracer's effect and pop one of my monsters, I would lose out, or I would, you know, net, I, I wouldn't... I think I would actually end up losing out on a material overall, either that or it would just be a net even trade. But this way, um, I can keep the same number of materials on board, pop a non-monster, and go off that way. I guess the question is, do I want to activate Dragon Ravine's effect? Is there anything in my deck I actually want to send? Pretty sure the answer is no. Although, wait, do I have a safer in my graveyard? I don't think I do, actually. Wow, did I not mill a single safer? No, I didn't. If I had Seifert or Levianir in the graveyard, I could mill the other one of those and then add the Levianir to my hand, which would let me extend even further, actually. But I don't, so I can't. <laughs> um, but I can make... I can do the Pisty setup here. So with that regard, is there even any reason to activate... Actually, there is a reason to activate Ravine, uh, and that's for the, um, the Excavate later. I'm going to discard this Nibiru, because I'm going to have a board full of monsters. Uh, and I'm going to send... I'm going to send one of my Saferts. Alright, now we can activate Rocket Tracer's effect. Pop the Dragon Ravine. Special the Recharger from our deck. And now we can actually do our Pisty and Striker Dragon little setup that we like to do here. 
for even more materials on board. Um, basically, that's like one of the main things. Okay, do I actually want to activate Romulus? No, because I want to normal summon this rocket synchron. Um, that is one thing you want to like. You, you might have noticed I'm like, you know, asking myself like, how many materials do I have on board, and can I get any more? Uh, that's a lot of the way to combo with Dragon Link in particular is to basically. It's, it's kind of like the opposite of synchro, not the opposite, but it's similar to synchro climbing, wherein you like use synchros to make more synchros. Uh, this is kind of like link climbing, we're just using links to make more links. Okay, now do I want to go for Quad Boral? Quad Boral would discard Maxi. I don't think I actually do. I still have Destrudo in my graveyard I can use as well. Maybe I use Rocket Synchron. Maybe I do make Quad Boral and I use Rocket Synchron to make Boreload Savage Dragon. That would require me discarding Max C. I think I'm fine with that though. I could also bring back Destrudo. Pop Striker Dragon. Have something to discard with Quad Boral. I think I like that a little bit better actually. Now let's activate Striker Dragon's effect. I'm gonna pop the Pisty, and I'll return the Recharger to my hand. Oh, I could even bring back a Dark Monster here. I always, I always forget that with um, with Recharger. Although I don't think I have anything I particularly want to bring back. Um, does that matter though? If I use Recharger's effect and summon a monster, then I could link it and Quad Boral. Or link it and Tracer into Quad Boral. Activate Quad Boral, discard the Max C. I mean, the whole reason I did this was to not discard the Max C, so I think I'm just gonna not activate Recharger here. Yeah, I'll just use a Destrudo, that's fine. Ooh, you know what, that might. No, no, that, that should still be fine. Although I should have. No, no, we still have a zone open. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, you know what, I could use Romulus' effect now. Bring back the Recharger. Do I have a Synchron in my graveyard? <laughs> I think I can make a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, actually, now that I think about it. Because Romulus just says you can't use it as a Link material, but you could definitely still use that monster as a Synchro material. Alright, Quad Boral's effect. Discard the C. I think I could have done this the other way I was talking about as well. I don't think I needed to use Romulus there. But, oh well. And then special the Synchron. Um, no, I don't want to activate that. That's fine. All right, let's finally make this Chaos Ruler and see what we excavate off of it. Still haven't used our normal summon, by the way. <laughs> this deck is ridiculous. What else is new? All right, Chaos Ruler activate. Yeah, looks like we're probably just going to be batting a Veiler here, but that's fine. Ooh, Thunder Dragon Dark. No, that doesn't do anything. Never mind. Yeah, just add a Veiler for extra negations. And then we could send these for the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Uh, but then we don't really have materials for... I mean, we could bring the Chaos Ruler back, but then we're still, like, one material short to actually end on a Borland, as well as Colossus plus Hot Red Dragon plus Borland Savage Dragon. Are we really one material short? That's actually kind of disappointing if it's true. I think we might be. Shoot. Hmm. <laughs> Let me just think for a moment. These get sent for Hot Red Dragon. This brings itself back. Well, no, actually, what we, need, we would need the normal Son of Rocket Synchron first. Equip Quad Boral. This brings itself back. Yeah, I don't think I can... Hmm. Ah, it's so close. I'm literally one monster short of being able to end on Boral End, Thunder Dragon Colossus, Hot Red Dragon, and Boreload Savage Dragon. I'm pretty sure I'm actually just one monster short. It's a little maddening, but what can you do? Alright, Norl summon the Synchron. Activate. Huh, I could bring back the Chaos Ruler. Does that do anything? Bring back Chaos Ruler, send for Boreland. Chaos Ruler comes back by its own effect. Oh, wait, hang on. I think I could have done this differently and actually ended on everything. Because I always forget you could use Borland to bring something back. Duh. I think I could have actually... Ooh, I think I could have actually done that if I had played this a little bit differently. Like, okay, hang on a second. Let me think. I guess it doesn't really matter if I bring Chaos Ruler or Absurator back in that case, right? 
Maybe it's this. Okay, bring back Absorado. Go for Borland Savage. Oh, but then I can't go into Borland. That's the thing. I need to make Borland... Shoot, I shouldn't have gone for the Hot Red Dragon first, I think. I think I should have actually tried to go for the Borload Savage Dragon first. I think that mattered here. Hmm. Alright. Well, in any case, let's just bring back the Absoratter. This is... I, I, this deck... <laughs> I knew this was going to happen when I was making this combo guide. That I was going to end up in situations where I was like, Wait, can I actually make a better board here? Because there's so many different branching paths and so many different intervals, too. Uh, now what we could do here is make... Oh, we can't make Link 2 or lower stuff, that's right. So let's see, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, we really are just one monster short, aren't we? That is so disappointing. Ah, grumble grumble. Let's see... I don't even know really why I'm bringing this back. You probably shouldn't, actually. You should probably definitely just leave it in the graveyard. I say probably definitely. You should just leave it in the graveyard, in my opinion. I was going to say, we could go for an IP Masquerade now, but no, we actually can't because we used uh, Quad Boral there. So yeah, Boral Land, again, two, three, four. We'd have to use one of these in order to make it. Which I guess we could use the Colossus if we really wanted to, but... So, I guess with this particular way that I did it, you could have a couple of options. You could end this way, or if you really wanted to, you could go boom, 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 S2, and then boom. Use the Colossus, which is not ideal, but... And then end on a Boral End Dragon, as well as two Omni Negates. Which, I think the... We did have a Veiler for a Monster Negate as well. You can make an argument for either way, which one is better, but... Um, yeah, that just, again, I guess shows off not only... <laughs> not only the nature of, like grass and how variable it is, but also how variable the Dragon Link deck as a whole is. Again, I think if I had done that a little bit differently, I could have potentially ended on Borland plus Borla Load plus Hot Red Dragon plus Colossus there. I guess, you know, as always, as ever, let me know in the comments if uh, you were able to spot the way to, to do that there. Um, again, I think if I had done things in a slightly different order, I might have been able to accomplish that, but... Um, in any case, I just wanted to show off another example hand there. Uh, this video is getting to be quite a bit longer than I intended it to be, so I'm just going to go ahead and move over to the outro now. Alright everybody, thank you for watching all the way to the very end here, especially a video this long. Yeah, I didn't intend this video to come out this long, I don't know how long it's going to be after I edit everything down, but I mean it is also the Dragon Link combo guide, I should have expected that it was going to be quite a bit long-winded there, but... Um, hopefully this was helpful to those of you looking to pick up the deck. Again, I think the most useful information is going to be that core combo line at the very beginning. Um, if we can, you know, memorize that line and then branch out from there uh, as we play in practice, I think that's, that's for me, was how I really started getting more comfortable playing this deck. And that's the way I would recommend going about it as well. Um, so, yeah, again, I just hope that you found all these uh, different lines here helpful. Uh, again, we started off with three from a quote-unquote regular Dragon Link deck that was 40 cards, and then showed off a bit of what Grass can do with some random mills there as well. I uh, ended up showing off a that game where we didn't use the, um, that first Grass game, we didn't use the Boot Sector Launch or Dragon Ravine, so... Um, yeah, always nice to just show off different lines. There are a million different lines. If I covered every single possible line, this video would probably exceed the like maximum allotted time on YouTube, which I think is like 10 hours. I could see like a full, 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 full combo guide for this deck going well above 10 hours if you really wanted to explain every single opening hand. But um, hopefully this was a good enough place to get you started and it will help you and or help you feel more comfortable playing the deck there. So um, I've definitely taken up enough of uh, not only my own time, but I think yours as well here. So I think without further ado, I'm just going to end it. This is Sexlex. Signing off, I hope you have a fantastic day.